G'day YouTube, welcome back to the VK8 FOS YouTube channel. We're going to be talking about satellite TV decryption again, and more specifically the BIS algorithm, which I've done a few videos previously. If you go to my uh, satellite T uh, satellite decoding um, playlist on my YouTube channel, there's a few BIS videos there. But for those of you that don't know what BIS is, it's a 48-bit encryption or TV scrambling algorithm that secures the broadcast, uh, that secures the transmission of, it's typically used mostly for like sporting matches, right? So pay-per-view boxing matches or like a car race or like a football match or something like that. It's used to secure the transmission of that live outside broadcast from the sporting arena or the racetrack up to the satellite, which is in geostationary orbit, and then it will beam the the satellite will beam the trend uh the live sporting event down to the ground to probably the tv channels broad uh broadcasting facility and then that'll send it to transmit it to the end users terrestrially so that's how that works um great thing about this is it's not terribly complex and being 48 bit it is well within the realm of cryptographic attacks against it so Basically, how it works is it's actually, yeah, it's 48 bit. So the 48 bit session key is, I think, 12 digits long. And I think in total, there can be about 281 trillion possible keys. So a long time ago, before we had like powerful GPUs, we used to crack BIS using CSA rainbow tables. So the problem with using CSA rainbow tables which is like a rainbow table attack in the modern day is the fact that modern BIS implementations don't expose something called a crypt eight. So when you take a recording of a satellite transponder to a transport stream file on a computer, there should be a lot of these values called crypt eights. I believe they are also 48 bit. So 12 bit digit long hexadecimal strings. Um, but yeah, as I said before, modern BIS implementations don't expose the crypt eight value. So crypt eight was like a hook or a crutch that some of these uh, early BIS cracking utilities relied upon to extract the 64 bit encryption key. Um, so our other, only other option is to just sheer brute force it using NVIDIA CUDA. Um, so We'll just, I'll minimize my browser there. So we can see here on my computer, right? I've got 40 logical cores. This is actually a dual CPU, uh, two Decker cores. So it's got 20 physical cores all up. And those are very large cores, which are optimized for, you know, running applications, system services, and just general tasks um, revolved around running the operating system. Now, if we go here to my NVIDIA control panel here, and we can see that I'm running a GTX 1080 Ti, we can see here that my GTX 1080 Ti actually has three and a half thousand cores. So they're not large cores, like these Intel CPU cores, but they're just like really tiny cores that are really good at just doing mathematics and cryptographical uh, calculations. So instead of having, you know, 40 hyper-threaded cores, crunching these numbers, we can actually get three and a half thousand cores doing these calculations. And that mean, this used to be called back in the day, I believe, single instruction, multiple, was it SIMD? Single instruction, multiple data or bit slicing in the modern day, I believe it's called. And um, we can have three and a half, I think each core can, so this particular application we're going to utilize to crack the BIS encryption, I think it can run 256 simultaneous calculations in, par on, in parallel with three and a half thousand cores. So we can crunch through these 281 trillion possible keys actually quite quickly, not on a GTX 1080 Ti, but if you've got like 30 series and 40 series, like a 4090 and stuff like that, you can actually go through 281 trillion keys in like five hours or something, I believe, which is, and that's because of, you know, advancements in computer technology and using GPUs for cryptographical stuff. So GPUs are really, that's why GPUs are used for like password cracking and like rainbow table search lookups and um, yeah, just basically brute forcing dictionary attacks 
uh, Bitcoin mining because they're just really good at doing mathematics and a lot of mathematics really fast. So, so yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. So the application is called CUDA BIS. Um, and it's this was an absolute rabbit hole trying to figure out how to get it working and everything. But with the help of a couple of friends of mine, uh, namely Craig and Alec, I managed to figure it out yesterday. So uh, my brain is fried trying to get this stuff working. Satellite TV decryption is a very secretive thing. Um, typically, there's lots of like small circles that share information and tools with each other, and they don't really share it with other people and keep it. It's very, very secretive, and all the information is just sparsely spread through like random European forums, and hardly anybody speaks English, which is bad for me. Um, and yeah, it's just really, really hard to figure out this stuff, but you guys know what I do best. Ex have everything set up for you guys and show you very concisely how to do all this stuff. So this Kudabis folder here, I will uh, zip that up with the uh, tr transport stream file and you guys can just follow along with me and I'll upload it for you. So, And you can see here I've got like the drivers I'm using and stuff like that. So hopefully that, that helps you guys out. If you're trying to emulate my setup, this is working on my setup. It might not work on your setup. I don't know. So let's get started, shall we? So in my Kudabis working directory here, you can see that I've got a file called horseracingfeed.ts. Now this file is encrypted and I can demonstrate that by opening VLC and attempting to play the file. And we can see the files getting played, but there's no audio and there's no video because the computer doesn't have the encryption key to be able to descramble this information. But that's fine because now we're going to utilize Kudabis itself. Now, it's actually really easy. <laughs> I can't believe how easy it was once my friends explained it to me. Um, so yeah, first we need a file to decrypt, obviously which is here. And then we're going to launch this application here called packets underscore ts dot exe. I'm just going to move this down here so you guys can see what I'm doing. So it's wants us to load the transport stream file and that's prompting us to do so. So I'm just going to copy the name of the transport stream file. I'm going to hit enter. And I know for a fact that the uh, PID, which is program ID, is 512. I'm going to hit enter on that. And we can see that an input.txt file has been created. So this file here will be utilized by CUDABIS. And it's got a couple of fields of information that need to be input into the cracking application. So I've got here. six or seven lines so not all these lines are pertinent to us we can just leave them as default um, but the two lines that matter to us are these two so this is the search range of keys right so 48 bit keys are 12 digits in length as i alluded to previously so it's not quite 281 trillion but between these two values hexadecimal values there'll be about 280 trillion possible keys Obviously, I don't have 8, 9, 10, 12 days to record this video. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually modify the search range just to keep this video nice and short. It's going to take about 30 seconds to search between these two values. Um, and I'm going to hit save on that. All the other lines don't touch it. These three lines are specific to this file here, like the transport stream. And then these couple of lines here are just like settings um for kudabis itself but everything else we can just leave that so yeah i'm just going to double check that i save that file and yeah basically that's it we just run uh, kudabis now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to locate the kudabis 512 64.exe file and i'm just going to press uh, i'm just going to launch the application we don't need powershell or anything for this you can just launch it directly so yeah we'll just wait momentarily shouldn't take too long searching a lot of keys by the way it doesn't look like it but i think it's searching like i don't know 600 billion per second or something i don't know it's a lot 
It actually tells me how many. Is it? Is, what's that? Is that 600 billion, 63 billion keys per second? 63. Yeah, 63 billion keys per second, maybe. Anyway, maybe it's 693 billion. I don't know. I'm not good at mathematics. But yeah, anyway. And we can see here that we've actually had a confirmed possible hit. Um, unfortunately, I don't want to expose what company or like what broadcaster is using this key. So I'm actually going to have to blur out the key for you guys. Unfortunately, I'm sorry about that. I just want to protect the privacy of... Because like this particular company reuses the same key for all their stuff. So if I expose their key, then people can just use it to unlawfully obtain potentially paid stuff so uh potentially paid broadcasting so i don't want to do that I, I just do this stuff because i'm a crypto enthusiast so yeah we've got our key now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy it and then i've just used chat gpt to vibe code a powershell script for me and this powershell script will capitalize all the alphabetical letters inside the hexadecimal string and it's going to remove all the spaces and the reason for that is we use that to input to our satellite decoding app so i'm going to run this powershell script here i'm going to have to blur it out i'm sorry guys but you know what i'm doing i'm just copying and pasting so and then i'm going to hit enter on that and then now we've got our capitalized and space removed key now what do we do with this key well we're going to decrypt a file that we've already recorded. We can actually input this key into VLC Media Player. So I'm going to go back to VLC Media Player. I'm going to go to Tools. I'm going to go to Preferences. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's not obscured by the webcam. Uh, I'm going to go down to the bottom left corner. I'm going to click All. At the top left corner, I'm going to write CSA. And then under input and codecs, I'm going to press on MPEG TS. And then where CSA key field is, I'm going to paste the capitalized and space removed file that my power, uh, uh, encryption key that PowerShell generated for me. And then I'm going to press save. And then I'll go back to my working directory and launch. Uh, actually drag the uh, horse racing feed file into the main window and look at that we've actually decrypted that file after the fact after we've recorded it which is really cool and yeah you should be able to guys you should be able to hear the sound of that i actually recorded this video already and the sound i didn't turn the sound up but yeah it's got sound and everything so yeah what you're looking at here is like during the interstitials in horse racing and there's no horse actual horse racing going on the cameraman basically just point the cameras into the crowd and just watch the crowd. So that's what you're seeing here. So yeah, that's really cool. Um, yeah, so I don't think we need to watch any more of that. So I'm going to close VLC. Now I'm just going to um, explain a few things to you guys. So that was just a really short search, right? Like we only searched like, what? how many keys? Is that 137 billion one oh anyway oh, whatever number that is okay um but if you guys are searching the entire 281 trillion it's going to take a lot longer than what i did right i just did this to shorten the video so typically every i don't know maybe every 30 seconds uh kudabis writes a file called last key dot txt it looks like gibberish to us but uh it actually kudabis uses this file to know where it stopped right so when i say oh it stopped it might have crashed or you might have exited it or powered off your computer accidentally when you're running the application it, it's constantly writing this file every 30 seconds to where it got up to in the key search so it's really important to actually, if you're going to run a new search, it's actually really important that you delete lastkey.txt for next time. Um, when you want to run it on a separate file <clears throat> in a different search range and stuff like that. Yeah, so it's always best to just reset Kudabis by deleting that lastkey.txt file. 
And if you accidentally quit this window and go, oh no, I just quit the window and I didn't copy and paste the, the, the key, never mind because Kudabis outputs this file called keys dot, uh, keysfound.txt and that'll be the uh, encryption key that it found in your last previous search. So yeah, you can also delete that file as well. That's not important. Um, and yeah, and then you can also delete input.txt as well. To, and then that basically resets uh, Kudabis to square one and then you can get your next file and then crack that or something like that. So yeah, that's how you do that. So what do you do now that you've cracked the actual file now? So a typical workflow is you record a 500 megabyte recording transport stream file of the encrypted BIS, BIS satellite transponder. You run use that file to run your cracking tools on and then when you obtain the key, you then input your key into whatever PC satellite front end software you use. It could be EBS Pro, DVB Dream, anything like that. Um, and yeah, that's how you do that. Or you might actually be using like a physical set top box that's connected to your television in your living room or something like that. So that's the typical workflow. I'm just using this file here. We're not doing it live. I'm just showing you how to actually use the tools itself. So. Um, this key here that we that we obtained, I could now punch that into my set top box or my software. And then if this transponder was still running, I could actually watch it live. So that's how all that works. So yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Sorry, it's a little bit long, but yeah, these these uh, advanced topic videos always go a long time. So yeah, thanks to Craig and Alec for helping me get um, Kudabis working. Um, it works really well. Uh, although I'm not going to be doing the entire 281 trillion keys anytime soon with this GPU, but I'll have to improve that setup at some stage. Um, but yeah, anyway, thanks very much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.